<laughs> Let me take it one step further. As in touch. As in touch. Physically. Does he treat you like something precious? Or something he knows? Does he push you? If he pushes you, don't walk away run away. If a guy pushes a girl his dad, he's going to kill his wife. You run away from that person. Mentally. Before we get to children and parents, I want to ask another question. Does all this talk about Christ and church and husbands and wives, does it leave you a little baffled? Because far more important than choosing a good boyfriend or girlfriend, husband or wife, <coughs> is understanding where you are with regards to Jesus. Christ died for the church. He gave himself up for us. If that doesn't click, it doesn't gel, then I really want to talk to you at some stage because that's far more important then who you hook up with for the rest of your life. That's an important thing, but this is much more. Okay, so grab and learn and talk about it. Okay, chapter 6, verses 1. Kids. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Let me tell you, there is no qualification to this except in the Lord. Now, um, that is, if your parents want you to launder money for them, feel free to say no. It may cost you something, but feel free to say no. Uh, if your parents want you to, to be a tax dodge for them, so that they put money in your account so that it doesn't come up, tell them, tell them no. I mean, I'm not telling you to submit to that. But in everything else, obey your parents. That's tiny bedrooms, if that's a big deal for your parents. Washing up, it's drying up, or you know, heaven forbid, stacking the dishwasher and then pushing the button and then unstacking it later on. <laughs> it, it means, you know, there's that thing in the laundry and it's got like a round hole and you put dirty clothes in it and laundry powder and you push buttons and it comes out clean. You can use that. Really, I'm serious. Boys, too, you can use these things. It might be a really new experience for you. Your mum may call the police thinking that you've been brainwashed or, you know, a doppelganger's come in. So maybe you need to do this a little bit more and make sure that it's in character. Here's another idea. Ask your parents what they want. They'd really like that. I, I'll give you two things I know your parents want. One is to go to bed on time. I'm looking at everyone. So I know those late night conversations on Skype might be the best thing, but go to bed when they tell you to. And, and maybe you don't do that last dungeon instance in WoW. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I like the way you Let me tell you, it's unlikely that you will need to submit to consequences that are horrific. You might have to at some stage. But let me tell you, and I have to ask these people if I can say it's bad luck. Um, there are three youth group leaders who had to negotiate with their parents about how many nights they were allowed to come to church. They wanted three, their parents wanted two, and they said, Dan, what do you think I should do? And I said, listen to your parents. Do what they say. Don't come to Bible study. Come to youth group, come to church, go to Bible study, because it's important to do what your parents say. Paul says it's important to do what your parents say. That's how serious the other is. And so when your mum asks you to do the washing up, do it. Dad wants you to mow the lawn, do it. Do it the first time or the twelfth time. Maybe even do some things before you get asked. You never know what sort of impact that would have. Second thing your parents want is to stop fighting. Guarantee, either with them or with your brothers or sisters, if you stop fighting, parents will go, oh, Lord, maybe we come to faith just for 